call this meeting to order. This is the meeting of the Public Works Committee of the City Council. We are being taped for being seen on uh, public television. Um, first order of business is approval of the minutes for June 29th. 2015. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. The next um, item of business, in the only item of business, is we had discussed this last time, is the reconsideration of the taking of center court. And we move that to this meeting so that we can gather a little more information. And I was, I offered to speak with uh, the mayor's office, which I did not have a chance to do. Okay. So I don't have anything in that office. Um, but I did speak to Mr. Huntley a few weeks ago, and um, his understanding is, is that they're proceeding, they're doing all of the um, survey work and everything else that they need to do to do the taking. Um, I have heard from others that the mayor has said that he would likely veto this if we go ahead as a council and uh, do the final approval, I guess. But I'm not clear on that piece of it, and that's, I think, what we need to clarify. For the mayor. You just clarified for me. So the DPW is moving ahead with what needs to take place in order to do the taking. If the city council, or you're saying if the city council votes, that's the piece I'm not clear on because I don't think we need to vote again. It's my understanding that our not accepting the recommendation of the DPW. to not do the taking of the DPW last year essentially was the order for them to proceed as if the taking is happening. Yeah. It, uh, is that what the mayor's office said? Because no, I, was, I haven't talked oh, to the mayor's office. Oh, I'm sorry. You haven't office. spoken to the mayor's office yet. Okay. I'm just curious, too, because I wonder why they would be required to take any action simply because we didn't recommend, we didn't accept the, the Department of Public Works recommendation. I'm just curious. So it seems to me that we, in the next meeting, we should move this again or even have, if, if you would like, I'd be willing to try and find a time when we can have another meeting. Our next meeting is not scheduled until the end of September. We had called this meeting so we could try and do one at the end of August. I'll send out, I'll talk to you guys and see if it's possible for us to, to do that as soon as possible. It may not be for weeks, but go ahead. I have a suggestion. Um, it, it, Councillor Klein made. If, if you think it would be more beneficial, maybe we could just invite the mayor to the next meeting and discuss it here with, with the whole committee. I think uh, to invite Director Huntley and the mayor both would be useful. I'm just trying to pull up an email, though, that um, I received a while back from the city solicitor who weighed in on this. So if we have sure. something else to we'll, talk about, I'll work it. So we'll out. come back to this agenda in a minute. It's OK. And we'll see if you can find that email. Um, New business, I'm going to just, if it's okay, introduce a piece of new business. It's more like information, and the reason I didn't get on the agenda was I just came from the Energy Commission meeting, but it ties into the update, uh, some more news about the update of uh, the solar array that will be going up on the landfill. So I just want to kind of fill you in, because we've talked about that last time we had an update. The last meeting, we did not have uh, much hope that the, there would be a net metering increase. In the meantime, as you know, Governor Baker has put his weight behind a net metering increase. Short term, this is what we discussed at the Energy Committee meeting, short term, this is a good thing. Long term, if you read what he's talking about, it's not such a good thing. Long term, what he's writing in there is that, okay, when we hit 1,600 megawatts, right now with everything in the pipeline, 
we won't get to that. But if we hit 1,600 megawatts up till 2017, that sounds really good because he's saying we will allow net metering up to that amount. Everything in the pipeline will get built. However, after that, the kind of things in the proposal, including that the uh, Department of the Department of Utility Regulation, or DPU, DPU, yeah. would then have jurisdiction over raising that rate or not. And he's been appointing people to the DPU, former utility executives, who actually wrote that article in the Boston Globe, which is basically saying, why should people pay for this expensive alternative energy? So down the road, what it looks like is going to happen is net metering could easily end for large solar array projects. Um, and it will continue only on, on homes. So short term, it looks like right now from this meeting and from our discussion, it looks like um, hopefully this will go through fairly quickly. The other piece is that currently the net metering increase in the cap is attached to an omnibus bill with hundreds of other things that could take the entire session and then some to pass. The hope is that with Baker saying he's behind this, and my sense of it is he's gotten pressure the economic pressure that all these projects are going to work. My hope is that it will be introduced as a standalone bill as well. So that's kind of where the solar stuff is for the city and for our neighbors right around here in terms of the large freestanding arrays. So until that actually happens, we can't as a city move forward with Well, we're moving, we're moving forward with everything that needs to be done and many of the which means looking at the RFPs so this is all being done you know through the public works I think it would behoove us when we invite Ned to come here I'd love to hear an update on where we are with that and that kind of question what does this mean how far can we how shovel ready can we be like the day a bill gets through can we go ahead and hey show up with your crew and start digging or are we then waiting months and months. So that's, that, those would be you know, one of many questions we might want to ask Ned when he gets here. Did you find the, uh, okay. Yeah. So I think um, all of us were CC'd on this. Um, so the solicitor said, does the city council saying no to the former BPW's recommendation against laying out Central Court as a public way mean that the City Council has voted in favor of laying it out? In this instance, I think it does. And so that was the ruling, that, the ruling, the recommendation that he made upon which the uh, DPW proceeded with doing whatever they're doing, which is, according to that, my understanding was they were, they needed to just survey certain aspects. So doing what they're the doing, meaning they're space. moving forward as if it's going to be a public way. Right. Um, he says, if both the BPW and the, and the planning board, I guess, have reviewed and made recommendations, the next step would then be for the DPW to have a plan of the proposed way prepared, that's what they're doing, and formally accepted by the city council in the manner in which all of the other ways have been laid out. So it does need to come back to us for us to make a final approval. So when you were saying that the veto, the mayor would veto it, that if we... If we vote to have it taken, it can be vetoed. It's why would he veto I, it if right now his own DPW is moving ahead as if it's going to become a public I, I think it has, to do, rumor, city all, so I guess it has to do with the solicitor's ruling, so his just, opinion. Just so we're clear, the process is the DPW does all of their work, then the city solicitor prepares an order of taking and right. a council order. I think it's the council order that the mayor is probably referring to. Oh, so if you're saying if we... I, I want to say again, sure that is simply the rumor that I heard. It's okay. not... It doesn't yeah, because it doesn't make things. quite logical sense. So if we were to vote in favor of the taking, why would the mayor veto that? Because he's currently instructing his own... You didn't have a council order to look at when it was but, brought to you. But I'm saying the future. Right. So that's. So, well, I mean, well, I think the I think I think the answer is that we voted. I think it was four four with an abstention. It was five four. Oh, it was okay. So it was we, five we four to no, 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 not. 
four to because uh, I thought Council Mercury was Mercury Spain. Spain. So, so we, it was it was by one vote it was passed. So, but the mayor or it wasn't it passed. wasn't passed. We it voted passed not to accept the DPW's recommendation. Exactly. Right. So the, the mayor didn't support it. He made that well. He supported the DPW's recommendation. He made that clear, and um, and the council voted to um, not accept the recommendation, which the solicitor it seems. Um, ruled that they, that means that they have they have to go forward based on our vote. Okay. And, he, I got and you. if he vetoes it, um, it would need six to override the veto. And if it passed four four the first time, that would have to change or else the veto stands. So the veto would be of the future order coming through of take of that's what takes he's going to veto. And so if, if we vote to go ahead and take it, he's saying I'm going to veto that, which will then mean all the plans that the DPW are currently doing are. No one void. Correct, right? Unless we overrode the veto. Okay. Okay. That's clear as mud, and hopefully you'll be able to explain this really clearly to the rest of the council. Is that the council? But I do think that it would be useful for us to um, clarify as much as we can with both Director Huntley and, and to speak to the mayor about this. And so before we do that, only because it's been made pretty clear to me in terms of when we invite and I'd like to be clear of what are the questions we would ask them that we couldn't just get as an informational thing. What are the kind of things or line of questioning we would want to pursue with the mayor and with Ned here? Well, from the DPW, I'd like a timeline, a sense of you know what what they're preparing and when it's going to be ready. Okay. Um, if there's an order coming from them. I mean, that is, there is this question that if the mayor doesn't support this, is the DPW going to go ahead and issue the order? The, the city solicitor does the order. And he, it sounds like he has to do the order because he's ruling that we went ahead right. and said, this is, I think, what you were explaining. That's my understanding. Now see if I I've got it, too. So I think from your understanding, here's what I got, that because the, the city solicitor is saying, because we rejected oh, in council, yeah. that okay. therefore it needs to move ahead as if this is going to become a public way. And therefore, the Department of Public Works has to act as if it's going to be a public way. An order of taking will need to take place, as will the various plans need to move forward. Then that order will come to the city correct? That's then that order will come to the city council. That's what it seems to be. So the question for me, if we're asking about a timeline, I mean, one of us could certainly ask those things. I just want to make sure we have enough questions, which more are like essay questions, for the mayor and Ned, that we invite them and we have those questions which we couldn't get just informationally. Yeah. So if you if we come up with others, just let me know. I mean, I'm very happy to invite both of them. I just want to make sure we have a number of questions that we. I couldn't have just called as the chair and said, here's our questions. Are our written questions? Give us written answers to them. Yeah, that would probably be sufficient. Um, just a quick question. Did you did you forward that email? I know we had it in the past. Did you, could you forward that, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you were correct on your 4-4 four, four vote with the one upstairs. Oh, thank you for looking. Okay. So, unless the vote changes, there wouldn't be enough to override for you to idea. Unless the vote changed. And well, there's one. There's eight votes, and we need six of eight. So. We need yeah. to find out if that, in fact, is what the mayor intends to do. I mean, it, so because there, one of the good... things that's our responsibility, if we want to save the city money, maybe the city, the uh, DPW should not be proceeding with this if it looks like there's no way that this is going to win. So there's the kind of question which I think would benefit having the mayor here and having a real discussion about. This is a bigger question than just something I can ask in an email. I mean, so that, I think that's a good point. That I think is is backing the presence of the mayor here. I think that uh, it's a good point, but it would be tough without bringing it to the council for a vote to figure out whether or not the vote change. And it kind of behooves the council, I think, to have that discussion mm -hmm. again with new information from DPW, and so, but it. it pains me because it means that the DPW is spending some time and money doing whatever they need to do to prep this. Yeah, yeah it, we would be, the, the DPW's position 
is that they're obviously, you know, they, they don't think it should be taken as a public way. The mayor, from I, I know, thinks so it's like, you know, a parking, you know, private parking lot pretty much, but being on he put it. So we're basically, we're essentially forcing the administration to do something that both the DBW and the mayor's office opposes, I think. I mean, you know, that's, and which we can do, but it just depends on what the vote is. Which is why I miss the old committee where we had people from the board and from the DPW. So, yeah. so I have a question actually that's kind of related to this conversation. There's a newly um, formed, what is it being called, something different, Public Works Commission, right? Right. Um, and I understand that we're going to be voting tonight on the appointment of Wendy Foxman to replace. Um, Terry. Terry, thank you, Terry Colleen. Um, what is going to be the purview of that commission, and is that a commission that we can liaise with in some way, or um, invite ourselves to be invited to offer public comment at, so that we might be able to garner some of this information that we need to make sound decisions? So when <clears throat> this the vote was coming on the restructuring, of the number of committees, including this, I had a number of discussions with the mayor and raised my objections to this. My understanding is that, yeah, we could ask, we can invite any members of that new commission to come, but that's an invitation. We, they don't have to honor that, and they do not have to come. Um, that, my understanding, but this has changed a little, because my understanding from those meetings with the mayor was Nothing is going to change practically. It was what I was told a number of times. I mean, you were too. And practically, a lot has changed. As you asked at the beginning, is what are we doing? And the question, the things that are, the reality is, there's a huge practical change where we don't have members of what was a board that voted on things, the Board of Public Works, and that we didn't have the Director of Public Works and usually a couple of other people from Public Works all sitting in a meeting. It's a very different practical situation that we now have. My understanding from the mayor was he said that the commission, which has a different authoritative role, but that its basic duties were not going to change. What's changing is they can't set rules so and rates and other things. That they were going to become a, recommend, a recommending body, but essentially everything that they were doing is they're going to continue to they, they are once a regulatory board that I show some Policy making abilities now they're, they're purely advisory. Yeah. But um, I think, if I remember right, without looking at the charter, because the, the commission is a multiple member body, I think we could, not that we would want to, or maybe we want to, I don't know, we could compel any one of their presence if you follow the charter, which is pretty, you know, it's a kind of a strict formula. You have to, you have to write, put things in writing, specific questions, seven days right. in advance. So, this I mean, same, yeah, this or same we could request we can... that they come here, and I guess they, if they came, they came, and they didn't, they didn't. They didn't we have the right to compel them, but it's just it's just slightly different. Uh, you may be right legally. I was asked by the mayor's office that any time we have an invitation, I, you may have been, heard this too, that I was supposed to call only for this committee, that I was to call the mayor's office and they would make that request. So procedurally, this new um, Public Works Commission, that's what it's called, right? If they make a recommendation, do they then make that to the staff at DPW that then would convey information to us? We don't have any direct relationship. We that, had, correct. We can ask them to come. We could right. ask them to show up at this meeting. We could ask them to show up at the city council meeting to explain. But in terms of kind of chain of command, as it were, they go directly to the staff at DPW. In, that's my understanding. That's the that they are advisory there. Is that your understanding? That's right. So they're not advisory to us unless we go through a process their advice. requesting their advisory to the Correct. Or we could refer our measures to them. That's slightly different, but that's another way of, that's way of communicating to them with them. But the, that collaborative aspect has kind of gone and changed very much. And if we were interested in going to meetings, we could go as a member of the public for as any 
but not in any kind of official capacity. Yeah, well. and we need to be careful that the three of us all showed up at that meeting, or two. Right. Or Pam shows up at the meeting. <laughs> I do take good notes. <laughs> you take their notes? Oh, I said I take, take good notes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not their notes. Yes, oh. we do. Anything else on our agenda? So let me just, sorry, I should have closed this circle. So it, it, it's kind of was my sense we should go ahead and ask Ned and the mayor to come to a meeting. Is that the? Yeah, that's my hope. Um, okay. But then we tossed around the idea of just sending questions to that as well. So but then you raised an interesting question and I reopened it after the vote. Which one was that? You had said, well, we'll be, you know, why are we going, it's kind of, then you answered it, but it was, well, look, why are we going through this big song and dance if it's spending city's money, if here's the outcome at the end? I, I mean, part of me, and I don't know if this is even appropriate to be saying in this forum, but I think that maybe the first step is to talk to the mayor, and it doesn't need to be in this formal setting to get a gauge okay. on where he is with this. I wonder if that could just kind of inform us about what we need to do. Would Although, to play devil's advocate to myself, I do think that um, it needs to be aired at city council level, so we're going to need to vote yeah. on it. So, but it'd be good to know. Would what you like to speak to the mayor? Or would you like me to go to the mayor? I'm happy to do it, but I'm also happy to yield to you if you would like to. I vote think as chair, it probably makes sense for okay. you to do it. Okay. Is my sense of it. I mean, if you rather that I do it for some reason, I'm happy to, but... I'm fine doing it, if you... I think that would be useful information. Okay. And I might recommend to him, I'll talk to him and say, if... How would he, does he think it would be useful for him to show up at this meeting? Because he might want to come to the meeting. So I'll ask him that as well. Would it be possible for us to um, schedule a meeting just about that briefly before our next city council meeting or something of this body if, in fact, we want to speak to them, if, if we need to just kind of speed this process up a little? Sure, we can always do that. Why so don't I try half an hour early or something? Why don't I... Here would be my suggestion. I meet with the mayor as soon as possible, which may not be until early next week. Um, and then I could write to the two of you and I don't know how we would move on that next piece. My sense of from that meeting, is that, um, I mean, we're not deliberating anything except an invitation. Uh, yeah, but you have to be very careful too, yeah. because even if we don't respond, if you're just communicating uh, you know, something of substance that we're voting on later, yeah, the open meeting law says that even if you're, even if you say, if you, even if you speak to a quorum that's not communicating back, that can be considered a violation. So it, it's a big trick. Would you trust me to just, and would it be okay to just write you and say, I recommend we invite the mayor to our next meeting? I mean, I, I think so. Or just, just a procedural. Or I could write and say, I don't think we should invite the mayor to the next meeting. Trust me to make that judgment call, or would you trust me? I, I yeah. trust you. Okay, so that would be the way they do it. I'll, I'll, the way they do it, I'll start to speak like Bob Dole, <laughs> Paul Spector says. Um, all right, so I'll meet with him. I'll email the two of you. If it looks like we would like to invite him, then we'll have to schedule a special meeting. So we're not meeting at the very end of, of September. So you're not having the meeting on the 31st? Oh. We have a meeting scheduled on the 31st of August. Well, let's keep that meeting scheduled because we may need that meeting. Okay. That's our normal meeting. This was a, a abnormal meeting. Okay, let's keep that meeting and we'll see if there's anything on the agenda. Like having a mayor. So we have a meeting scheduled for Monday the 31st at what time? In the here? 
It's, well, you guys, Usual time. you were accommodating me, but now I can do anything. So whatever you guys want to do is fine with me. Two in the morning. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> what time would you folks like to meet? Uh, this is on the 31st. On the 31st. Uh, I'm flexible that day, so I'm fine with whatever works for everyone. I want to do it earlier so Pam's in her It doesn't make, make any difference to me. Ooh. Might make it a little bit, you know, if you do decide to invite the mayor and something like Ned might make it a little bit more inviting to yeah. Have it earlier as opposed to later. She's going to say we have it later as opposed to earlier. Oh, well. I mean, the, the earliest I could do would be about four. Okay. How late are you talking, Paul? 7 p.m.? Yeah. Not at all. No. Can I get back to you on this? <laughs> That's written down. I, I, that's not, I'm supposed to be in Boston that day. I'm trying to get out of Boston in, in traffic at those hours. It's just, mm -hmm. it's. Can we look dead. at doing it um, right before the city council meeting on Thursday the 3rd? Just to make it easier? Thursday the 3rd, I could do that. That seems like a good idea. So cancel the 31st? Cancel the 31st and let's do Thursday the 3rd. And this is only if you are recommending that we do this, correct? And you're going to let us know. Yes, but I would like to leave that meeting scheduled in case we have anything else coming up on the agenda. Otherwise, we don't have another meeting for six weeks. So we can always cancel it. Would that be okay? That's fine. Okay, yeah. sure. Thank you.